May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our restorer and liberator. Amen. Amen. Yesterday, Dan preached on the passage just before this one in the gospel. And we learned that the Sabbath is a day of rest, but in a countercultural way, perhaps. It doesn't mean rest at the expense of our neighbors. It doesn't mean rest as in the work ceases. No, the work is still there, just not as one might imagine it would look like. The work of the Sabbath, as Dan said, is liberation and restoration of all creation. The kingdom of God then must be a place with an ethos of these same two things. Being realized and embodied in all of its inhabitants. A place that offers this liberation and restoration. The gospel message yesterday stuck with me as I prayed and contemplated these two short parables that we received today. We live in a world that operates in sharp contrast to these concepts of rest and liberation. A world that places an enormous amount of value in what a person has to offer and how to maximize one's use, often to the detriment of the other enslaving people to their particular jobs or roles that the world tells them, tells us that we are um, to get our livelihood from. We live amidst a culture that lifts up productivity and efficiency over self-care and pacing oneself as to not become overtaxed and burned out. Jesus gives us today a glimpse of an alternative kingdom, though. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed that someone sows in a garden that grows to become a tree where the birds of the air make nests in, like yeast that leavens flour. A single, tiny, seemingly ineffectual seed lending its branches to weary wings, to nest, to rest in, a minuscule measure of yeast that transforms, even liberates, flour from the limits of its raw properties so that it may become, grow and become nourishment for the body. You see, while the work of the Sabbath is working towards the restoration of all creation, the liberation of all creation, the kingdom of God is the place where those things can actually be realized and tasted. And because we are people of a particular place in a particular time, what does this look like then, now in our lives today? What do we mean when we say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as of today on earth as it is in heaven? In what ways are we being called to be ambassadors and ushers of this restoration in the world around us, in the garden in which we're planted? Are we demonstrating in our daily lives and our daily activities behaviors and values that midwife these places and opportunities of rest and liberation for weary and burdened beings or for a weary and burdened environment even? We can help usher in the kingdom of God. We're called to do this in small ways that deliver big results over time and with a proper intent. The intent of mercy, the care for the other, intent of restoration, intent of liberation from those things that limit one's ability to grow and be transformed in unexpected and surprising ways and even become nourishment to others. And the world, is, the world over is looking for this. We all find ourselves searching for places in our lives to find rest, to be liberated from something in our lives that binds us. And so, from our vantage point here, it is our responsibility to do this, to enact in our small, ways what Jesus has already fulfilled 
to enact these things here on earth, demonstrating to the world what Jesus has already fulfilled. Our responsibility then, our privilege, is to offer a real sign of hope to a hurting world, a suffering world. Hope of rest, of restoration, hope of liberation and life. A hope that can only be rooted in the hope of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We're about to come to this table and receive, embody this hope. Take it out into the world with you wherever you may go. Live it out in ways that others can come to share in it freely with us. And find a place to rest and enjoy a taste of liberation.